Oh, so good to be home. I feel like I'm forgetting something. What time is it? 10 o'clock! Shoot, we had a doctor appointment. We gotta go back, guys. My storage room is a disaster. When am I ever gonna have time to tackle it? I miss you so much too. It has been way too long. The kids have been talking about your kids. Let's plan a time. Let's just do it right now. Let's plan a time while we're on the phone to get together. Not next month. Not the next month. Ooh. Um, Next year, probably. Why don't we just plan on like 2024? You know, three years from now? Would that probably work for you? Perfect. Let's do that. Ah, uh, the struggle of motherhood. I know it far too well as a mom to three little girls, ages six, almost four, and just turned one, who's running her own business, homeschooling. I know the struggle, but I also am a self-proclaimed time management enthusiast. It's something I love, I read books about, I apply to my life, and I am all about fitting as much as you can into a day without getting super overwhelmed and also having time for what matters most. So today I thought I would share with you in collaboration with many other moms here on YouTube, what are my favorite time management tips that any mom, super busy, not so busy, homeschooling, working, all of the above can fit into her day and just really easy things that you can do to fit more into your day and to make it feel less overwhelming. Tip number one is to set different tasks for a certain day of the week. So every single day you can set different tasks for that day. If you run your household and there are things that you do every single week, once a week, try to assign those to a certain day of the week, most weeks. Obviously things come up, but when you set a certain item, a certain task for a certain day, then when you go to plan your week, you don't have to think of all those things and plan a day for them every single week. For example, let's say meal planning. Maybe you hate meal planning, that's me, but it's something you have to do if you wanna save money, if you wanna make sure you're eating a decent diet of foods and feeding your family well, you need to have a some kind of plan of what you're gonna buy, what meals you might make. And maybe you're sitting here trying to fit that in on a different day every single week. Then you add in cleaning, you add in organizing, you add in bill paying, you add in looking through your mail and all of those things. Those are all things that you have to do every week. Why not just assign them to a certain day and then you already know that day you're going to do them so it just takes the brain work out and then it allows you to have more brain power to fit in the things that come up or are different every week. So here's just an example of different things you might do on different days. And obviously you can be flexible, especially if you have like a varying schedule, but it might be nice to just say, you know, on day one, I'm going to do this. On day two of the week, we do these things and then you can be flexible as time requires. But this is just a great way I run my business and also how I run my home. Tip number two, get yourself a copy of my favorite book, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Everybody's been talking about Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's an amazing book. I think of that book as more of the how to fit things in, and this book is more of the why and what to fit in. This book changed my life, got me out of postpartum depression. Now I'm here six years later, still living a good life, going after my dreams because of this book. This book is all about the little things you can do every single day, what types of things that will turn your life around and make your life amazing. Highly recommend it. I talk about it all the time, but if you haven't read it yet, go pick it up. It's a great time management tool and just a tool for life. As I already mentioned, this is a collab with many other women here on YouTube, started by Dawn from The Minimal Mom. Make sure after you watch my video, you co watch theirs to get other tips, tricks, and ideas for time management in your life. You can never have too many ideas when it comes to time management. There's only 24 hours. Let's make good use of it. Next up, if you aren't already in love and using the Alarms app on your phone, get acquainted, get comfortable, get cozy, reunite with one another and use the heck out of this thing. I use this all the time. As somebody who loves planning, who has things planned so I don't forget, I still have things come up where I need to remember things at a certain time, or maybe I'm busy and I don't have time to write something down, or I'm driving, I can do the hands-free option to talk to my phone, I can put it in my phone if I'm not driving, and remind myself of that thing later on when I can write it down. I use alarms all the time for a myriad of things. Things like reminding me to give my kids their vitamins, 
My kids take an iron supplement. You have to take it 30 minutes before you eat, so they take it right when they wake up, but I don't always remember. So I have an alarm that goes off right at 6.10 when I get them up, and it reminds me to give them their iron. It reminds me to take my medications. For example, I had a pulmonary embolism earlier this year, and I have to take blood thinners so it doesn't get bad. And so I've forgotten, so I now set timers twice a day to remind me to take it. As busy moms, we are constantly distracted. The fact that we can keep ourselves alive, much less our kids, is amazing, but there are so many things that can easily slip your mind, so I use these all the time. Most of my best ideas in life come when I am driving or showering. So if I am driving and I am struck with an amazing idea, I will just talk to my phone and have it set an alarm for a certain time when I know I won't be driving and I just tell it to name the alarm whatever my idea is. That is how I've come up with many of my business ideas and they have all, I've just used my alarms on my phone to remind me. Green eggs and ham. Find my earring. <laughs> Have my child sit on the potty. Meet with lamps. I must have been selling some lamps. Put the cat away. Lactation consultation. <laughs> $24 Thursday for fans. Keys and stroller. Pom pom ice smash. Poop time. <laughs> Ask about a dumpster. Another thing for birthday parties, setting out their presents, I often will forget that, so that's pretty funny. The great thing is even my kids, and I'm sure your kids if you use this tip, will start to remind you to set alarm. So if my child asks, mama, can we have this for snack? And I'll say, oh yeah, will you help me remember? She'll say, set an alarm, mom, so you don't forget. And so I'll set an alarm. It's just an amazing tool, and then you're also teaching your kids a good tip for how to remember things. We have technology, let's use it to our advantage so we don't forget those little things. One of my biggest tips, especially with little kids, especially if you are at home with them all day, whether you're working from home, homeschooling, stay-at-home mom, whatever it is, I think a huge thing we need to do to keep our little kids from driving each other crazy, driving us crazy, driving themselves crazy, is to split our day into chunks. This is called time blocking. I've been doing this for years. I just never really called it that. I just thought, you know, we're having a schedule, we're having a routine. Some parts of my days are very scheduled. Some parts of my days are very loose, but they all have kind of a time frame that they fit into. So here is, for example, a typical day for us. From 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., that is my work time and get ready time. Yes, I get up at 4 a.m. I have plenty of videos on that I will link below. That is a time where I can have some time every day to get some work done. Now, I don't always do the same work during that time, but I have that open for me to do work. From six to eight, it's family time, chore time, and eat breakfast time. Eight to 10 is homeschooling. 10 to 11.30-ish is play time, and sometimes we try to leave the house. 11.30 to 12.30 is lunch. 12.30 to three, we lay the kids down for nap quiet time, it's my work time, and then if they get up before three, or my oldest daughter who doesn't nap, she gets screen time for a little bit in there. Three to five is a time where we sometimes leave, we try to get out of the house, we play. Five to seven is family time, and we eat supper, and then seven o'clock is when we start our bedtime routine, the kids lay down, and then my husband and I have free time. So it's not super rigid, these times can change around, but by just having these dedicated times where we have certain things that we do, it just allows for us to have a change of scenery, it allows for a little more structure than just go play. My kids have never done well with just going to play for hours on end. Hopefully, you know, eventually they'll get there, but when they're little, they need a little bit more structure. So this has really, really helped us, help me fit in things that I need to do. So for example, if I have a new project I need to work on, I can figure out which chunk of my day I can fit that in. You know, if it has to be when my kids are asleep, it's either my four to six chunk, my um, nap time chunk, or my bedtime, you know, once the kids go to bed chunk. If it's something I can do while my kids are up, I'll probably do it during this morning time, you know, before we get into the flow of our day. So this just helps me have a structure that I know when to fit in play dates and things like that because I know what works well for my kids and when we do certain things. Something else I highly, highly recommend if you are married to have weekly meetings with your spouse about what you have going on that week. I know a lot of people have adopted the digital calendars where you're sharing calendars on your phone. 
Sometimes you use paper planners. I just found I am a planner, my husband. That's just not his strong suit. That's okay. He has many other great qualities. Plus his schedule is insanely random and crazy. He is a chef at a hotel. So especially if you have a situation like that, that is honestly the number one fighting topic we have ever had in our marriage was work schedule and the stress it puts on our family and each other. So it's like, we're usually not even mad at each other. We're just mad at our situation. So having weekly meetings right here at the kitchen island, every single Sunday, we try to sit down and we go over what's going on when, you know, he's often not home, but I want him to know what's going on in our kids' lives. What appointments do we have going on? Sometimes I need him to pick up a child or bring a child somewhere before or after work or on his day off. We like to build in family days on his days off. That's a huge benefit to us for homeschooling is that even when he's off in the middle of the week, that can be our weekend. And so just having those conversations every single week has honestly saved our marriage, has made our marriage so much stronger. We are fighting hardly ever about time management issues because we have those weekly meetings we're flexible but we know what's going on and even if you have it in a digital calendar or somewhere it's just so nice to sit down and talk about it work out all the details be on the same page and it's just a great time to connect just the two of you i have a planner addiction and i can easily go into a store and pick up a planner and fall in love or see one on instagram and fall in love but i know all too well and so does my bank account it's not too happy with me for my planner buying purchases and tendencies over the past few years i have learned for myself and maybe this is you where you just can't find planner peace there are parts of a planner that work well but there are parts that are missing i know for me especially since i run an online business and i'm homeschooling like i have just so many things floating around that one type of planner just it will never work for me because it's not made for me. So I've learned to use a customizable planner. This is my Duck Egg Malden A5 Filofax. It's the cover. And inside, I have so many different sheets that I created. You can create your own. I use Planify Pro, but you can also just customize them on Canva or PicMonkey. Or Etsy has tons and tons, and I have used some Etsy ones printables online that you can print out for your planner. I have a whole video on this if you guys want a rundown of what my planner actually looks like, how I print the pages really easily that doesn't take a lot of time, and how you can too. Make sure you go check out that video after this one. But I just love this. I I honestly saw a planner last week and I was like, oh, that looks like what I need. And then I'm like, Sarah, this never works. You always buy a planner and it doesn't work for you. And so what I love about this is I can change out the pages. If it stops working for me, maybe I learn this method's not working or I'm going through a really busy season and I need a, day, a page for each day or something. I can easily change it without spending a lot of money and I'm not having to move to a whole new planner. My months stay in here, all my business stuff stays in here but I can just make a little tweak and it just saves me time. So I highly recommend some kind of customizable planner. There's lots of different ways to do this. Lastly, build certain tasks that you have to do every single day into a certain time of day or tie them to a thing you're already doing every day anyway. So for example, we eat every single day. So I have tied cleaning up the kitchen to eating so after every meal i put dishes away i will run the dishwasher if it's full and i will clean off the counters and sweep the floors if you're feeling behind on that stuff just do it after you eat every single day or as much as possible tie those two things together that's pretty common sense but there are other things like doing the laundry i tie putting dirty laundry into the washing machine with putting my kids to bed so right after i put my kids to bed I grab their laundry, I grab our laundry, or I grab towel laundry, whatever it is, and I put it in the washing machine and I set it on a delay for the morning. So that has really helped me stay on top of laundry because it's always going in at the same time every day. Do going to sleep and laundry normally go together? No, but I have made that habit. I've tied those two things together. In the book Atomic Habits, James Clear calls that habit stacking. This is something I've been doing for years and it's worked really well. Another thing I put together is I prep supper at lunchtime if I can. If I have the time, I will cut up things. I will throw stuff in the crock pot or the instant pot at lunchtime because I'm already in the kitchen and so I'm getting ahead on supper at lunch. 
Also with laundry, because it's never ending, we typically put laundry away when the kids wake up. So after they get their teeth brushed and everything, I usually have their laundry. If I've washed their laundry that day before, I will have it sitting in the upstairs hallway and they will take their laundry and put it away. So that is a great thing to do right away. So we start the day with laundry put away. It's just a great habit to get into. And then with dishes, when you run the dishwasher at night, which is another great habit, in the morning, it is my husband's job. He has been doing this for years because I've talked about him about how important and how helpful it would be if he just did that every morning for our family because he's often out of the house before the kids even wake up. And so that just really helps me because mornings are crazy to have that already done. So maybe that you will tie that to getting your coffee in the morning. You will get your coffee in the morning and then you'll empty the dishwasher or while it's brewing, you will empty the dishwasher. What are things in your life that you are struggling making sure you do every day? What part of the day or what habit do you already have that you can tie those things to? I don't know the answer for you, but I bet if you sat here and kind of thought about it, you'll think, oh, I'm really struggling on putting laundry away. Well, what task during the day can you tie that to that you're already doing? Or what time of day can you do that thing? Then to build the habit, set an alarm, and within a couple weeks, it will just become habit and you will be good to go. And Shirley said it best that it's truly the little things in life that mean the most. It's not these big grand gestures that make a beautiful life. It's those little tiny things. And so by managing your time well, you make more time for those little tiny things in your day. I hope this video was helpful and encouraging. Make sure you go check out more of my videos and go check out the other women in this collab and get inspired, get motivated to really manage your time well it's back to school time we all can use help right now and i hope this video has helped you thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you next time bye guys